very happy to, to speak to you today and very happy to see that I have in front of me the best of the biomass industry. And today I'm going to talk about sugar. Okay? And if you look at sugar, in fact, this is absolutely not new. Uh, uh, once I was in Ivory Coast and I was meeting with a, with a sugar miller that was telling me that the use of bagasse, which is the main waste for sugar, e to produce steam, was dated from the Egyptian. And that was funny because I was thinking that you know, the first biofuel that was really used was wood. But you realize that the second biofuel that had been used is bagasse. Another fun fact about bagasse is that, did you know that bagasse is a, come from a French word? That the, this French word is bagage. And, and the very funny thing about it is that now bagage means luggage in French. So it had evolved from waste to luggage. So I'm not going to talk about something new. I'm just going to talk about optimization because sugar millers have always been using this bagasse. If you look today a little bit at where is the sugar industry in the world, you'll find out that the sugar industry is here. I mean, at the exception of Brazil, okay, the major biomass poor uh, the major sugar producers are in India, China, Thailand, and Philippines. So I know that among the crowd here, you have definitely people that are in touch with the sugar industry. You can check that USA, which used to be a, a very big sugar producer, is, is not at the bottom of the table. I mean, one of the reasons, obviously, is that they have abused of sugar for so long that they had to create Diet Coke. I just want to step back a little bit and start to talk a little bit about what is the sugar mill process for the ones that are not really familiar with it. So we grow sugarcane, OK? And when we harvest the sugarcane, we create a waste, which is the cane trash. Basically, the cane is cut in the field and the trash left there. The cane then will go to a crushing mill, OK? And when the cane is crushed, OK, this is the cane. When the cane is crushed, it's going to create a waste that is the bagasse, OK? And the juice from the cane will then go to a refinery. While the bagasse itself is going to go to a power plant. And this power plant, in fact, will be able to produce electricity uh, to the mill and uh, manage the process. If you look today at the waste that you have, so this bagasse and this can trash, which are the two major waste of the sugar industry, and you start to put a little bit in number what it means in terms of power generation capabilities, you'll find out that a country like Thailand today has about 2.4 gigawatt electricity potential from sugar only. And this 2.4 gigawatt, to put that in perspective, is about three nuclear power plants. So you can generate as much power as three nuclear power plants only from the sugar waste if you use the bagasse and the can trash. If you look today at what are the practice, I mean, all the meals that have been built in 30 years ago, 25 years ago, was using what I will call low pressure, low temperatures, so around 44 bar, 400 degrees. While new meals today are, you can say, in majority of the world still uh, 67 bar, 480. I say majority of the world because, for example, we were in Australia uh, talking to the Sugar Mill Association a couple of months ago, and that's what they were installing in Australia. So it's still the, the parameters that are the most used. But most of the sugar millers are now realizing that bagasse is not a waste that must burn. It's really a valuable source of energy. And uh, it is not a waste. And they want to use now a new generation of technology that I will talk the second generation. Because sugar mills are not only doing sugar anymore. Now they are becoming IPPs. If you take the example of Mauritius, which is a small island in the Indian Oceans, today Mauritius needs of electricity is mostly met by the sugar miller as IPP producers. The example I'm going to talk about is basically a 6,000 ton per ton mill, which is the classical here. You can say in India, in Indonesia, in Philippines, or in Thailand, most of the mill are around at 60,000 per day. This is the typical, you can say, data that you will have from one of these mills. Okay, it's going to use a 140 ton per hour boiler running at 67 bar. It will consume about 60 ton per hour of bagasse and it will produce steam for the process and electricity for the process. And then 
uh, electricity for export about 13 megawatt. It's already not bad because if you look at 30, 40 years ago, you had, you can say, only your own consumption that was met by the power generation from bagasse. Now, I want to use the second generation. And what does that mean? It means that I'm going to change my boiler and go at 100 bar, 540 degree. What does that mean? By doing, going high pressure, you can hear on the curves, I'm going to increase the efficiency of my steam turbine. And therefore, being able first to reduce my bagasse consumption by about 12%, because I'm going to have a boiler of higher efficiency. And secondary, I'm going to be able to generate more power because I have a more efficient steam turbine, which bring me to a higher export, about 13%. What does that mean is that by applying this technology, you're going to be able to win on both ends of the process. Less fuel consumption, more power generation. But you're going to tell me that if I'm a sugar meal, I don't need that. Why I don't need that? Because I have bagasse. It's free. It's in my storage, and I need to burn it. But you have another way to look at it. And the other way is to say, OK, I have bagasse. I'm my 6,000 ton per ton meal. And I have access to about 300,000 tons of bagasse a year and about 76,000 tons of cane trash. OK, cane trash that was left in the field. And if you factor that, and then you decide to burn everything, and to use most of the waste that you have access, you will be able to double your export revenue. Is that your 6,000 ton per hour, your, your 6,000 ton per day meal of the first generation will have only half the export capacity of the exact same meal with the exact same waste if you move to higher pressure high temperature. But you're going to tell me that cane trash, not easy. We've tried. Uh, cane trash doesn't work on my bagasse boiler. And there's reason for that. One of the main reasons is that cane trash and bagasse are two very different fuels. Okay? Here you will see a graph of two major indicators of behavior in the boiler. The first one is the corrosion indicator. And the higher your score, the less corrosive you have. The second one is the falling indicator. Falling being the ashes building, uh, building in the boiler. This falling layer, the lower it is, the better it is. And you can see in red the bagasse and in blue the cane trash. So you can see that those two fuels are the opposite of each other. One is non-corrosive, the other is very corrosive. One is high falling, the other is non-high falling. And therefore, when you've tried your cane trash in your bagasse border, it didn't work out. So obviously, you try to do a little bit. So I've done some more calculation. What is if we have 10% cane trash and 90% bagasse, which is the green one? It's OK, but we're still already feeling the problem in falling and in corrosion. And if we go more than 10%, then you arrive at a fuel mix that is corrosive and create falling. Therefore, most of the trials that have been done have been, have been failures. And the reason is, if you look at cane trash, in fact, you, look, you have to compare it with straw. And cane trash, we have the same table, same indexes. And you can see that cane trash is, in fact, similar as rice straw, that I'm sure you are all familiar here, because we are in Asia, which produces a lot of rice, and also similar as wheat straw, which is a crop that we have a big experience with in China. So when you look at cane trash, you need to look at solutions that are unable to, to fire straw. But the difficulty is always harvesting. You know, cane trash is not like bagasse that is just at the mill waiting to be burned. Cane trash, you have to go on the field and take it. And um, I've been around, this is me in the Philippines, looking at cane trash on Nagros. I've been around, and I've seen a, a couple of solutions that I found are smart. And, and one of them is, for example, the use of small round beller, like you have on the corner, and that will bring the cane trash from the field into small bales and then ship to the mill. And that will enable you, in, you if you want, to collect and, and harvest this fuel better than we do today. So on this second generation boiler, what do you have to ask yourself if you are a sugar mill? I think the first thing you have to ask is what mix I'm considering. Because, OK, we can do a lot, but there are still always some limitation. And then one of the limitations is basically, will I burn more than 50% cane trash, or will I burn less than 50% cane trash? Because this will change the technical solution that's going to be applied. 
If you burn less than 50% cane trash, you can burn bagasse, you can also burn wood, and you can also burn a lot of rice husk. So that gives you a lot of flexibility. But in that case, you need a feeding system that is adapted to this fuel. If you want to burn up to 100% cane trash, you need another feeding system. But in that case, you'll be slightly limited into being able to mix it with wood chip and rice husk. Bearing in mind that both of these border can always burn 100% bagasse, which is obviously an easy fuel. This is, so everybody that has been in my office have seen this diagram before. This is a firing diagram. And this is a diagram that represents the most the technology. What do I mean by that? This shows you the efficiency. This shows you what we can burn and the range of fuel we can burn. And this is where we go to this, what I call the second generation. Because as you are not a sugar producer anymore, but an IPB, you don't, have, you don't apply the same rules. You have to have available power all the time. You need to be able to fire fuel within a high range because during one season, you will be on the left, very high master content fuel. You will do mostly bagasse. While when you are on uh, another season and you must more with rice husk and wood chip, you have a higher calorific value. Okay, so you need to be able to operate during all those range. I think that when you look at your boiler in general and this firing diagram, it, it tells you, and, and if you have your own boiler, you can, you can check what it is, but if you look at the bagasse boiler, you'll be between the B and C. That's what you have today. And what we're offering is to extend this B and C to A and D enabling you to operate all year. And that means that you need to have better control. That needs to mean to have different material. That means you need to have frequency converters and so on to be able to operate to this range of fuel. And to finish, I would say that I started saying it's a long history because we've used bias since the Egyptians. So we're not bringing anything new in terms of new fuel like we've done with coconut, for example, or new fuel like we've done with napier grass. Today, we're bringing just a way for the sugar producers to generate more revenue. And I think that this use of bagasse and cane trash for energy is definitely the brightest future possible because it will enable, as you've seen in the first slide, to generate a lot of power for a lot of countries. Thank you.